How are you today? Happy New Year to you. Today, we're going to be doing the first week, 1973, the biggest hits, the top 10 in 1973. How much better was it back then? I mean, these, these are the pop charts. We're starting off with Al Green, You Ought to Be With Me. And I remember that from last week. It was dope. It was real dope. Big fade out territory. 1973, everybody gets a big fade out. So, I mean, Al Green's dope. Al Green, he does whatever he wants. He goes wherever he wants. He walks. Kind of reminds me of Randy Newman, you know? Kind of the kind of the wandering, wandering chord progression kind of thing, but still has its own unique, specific style. It's Al Green's dope. Okay, Al Green, I mean, coming in at number 10, coming in strong in 10th place, week one, 1973, 50 years ago. What do we have next? Curtis Mayfield, Superfly. I think we all know. I think we all know this one's dope. Man, that's a good one. Man, Curtis Mayfield, super fly. It's, it's just, it's a killer. It's got a key change in the middle. You know, that outro, try to get over. It, it's, oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Yep. Yeah, you can't take anything away. You can't take anything away. Curtis Mayfield, Superfly. Okay, here we go. Number seven, Your Mama Don't Dance. And, you know, I, you know, I, I just kind of remember this one from last week. And, it, you know, it's fine. It's serviceable. Let's call it serviceable. It does the job. It's um, Loggins and Messina. Your mama don't dance, and it's it really does its job. It uh, you know bring the arrangement is it's like they were working with stereo, you know, and they wanted to work with the stereo thing, so they'll bring in like. A half a bar of piano on your left and then like a whole instrumental section after the second chorus on your right of a loud guitar they got they got horn trios they got horn duets I think there were some strings in there I mean it's just all over the place all over the place but in Kenny Loggins has a banging catalog and so I wouldn't put this at the top of that. And it's surprising, but maybe shouldn't be, that it's sitting at number seven. Is that right? Yeah, seven, seven. Okay, wait, no, that was eight. They're an eight, that's my bad. Rockin' Pneumonia and the Boogie Woogie Flu sitting in seven.
All right, Rockin' Pneumonia and the Boogie Woogie Flu by Johnny Rivers. That was coming in at number seven. I might have been unnecessarily hard on the guitar outro last time. You know, it was it's a fine guitar outro. There's just nothing special about it. So it's verse, chorus, verse, chorus, piano, instrumental, chorus, verse, chorus. I think, or maybe chorus, 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 or pre-chorus, chorus, chorus, or something of that nature. And, um, you know, not, here's the thing. This was done way better before and after. The whole vibe of it. Like, uh, let me think. In the summertime when the weather is fine. That song, same song. And better in every way. That's all. Uh, next one is Albert Hammond, It Never Rains in Southern California. Mm, I kind of remember this one. Okay, it always rains in Southern California. You know, and I was kind of hard on it last time. So I went over there, I got in the California state of mind, came back, and, you know, like, yeah. the tempo's slow, and I'm not sure where this song fits in. Like, it would make a really good theme to Love Boat. You know, if you were going to watch an episode of Love Boat and this came on, you'd be like, that's perfect, guys. You nailed it. All right. The next one is Funny Face. You know what? I'm going to try to get my mind right. I'm going to go in with an open mind about this one. Because last time, Funny Face... Funny face wasn't for me, but I'm gonna listen to it again. You know, try to try to just let it let it be a good let it be a good song. It's a good song. A lot of people like the song. They they bought it. It got the spins. <laughs> mm-hmm. No. No. It's not okay. It's not. Um, it's not, there's not one thing about that song that's bad. It, like, every single thing about that song is bad. From the way it starts, like, they didn't have, they didn't have an intro, so they just... They just fade up into that chorus. Maybe this was for a movie or a television show. I don't know. I can't explain this one. This one's an anomaly. You know, there's no good reason why this one, Funny Face by Donna Fargo, is getting played more than. Superfly? And You Ought to Be With Me by Al Green, man. That's that's hard. That's hard. Mm. On to the next one, though. We're going on to the next one. Funny Face. I can't wait till that. I can't wait till Funny Face drops out of the top ten. Stevie Wonder, man, like he, you forget how 
good that song is. If you haven't heard it in a minute. It's so unbelievably good. You know, a second ago I was talking about somebody who had a bunch of parts that kind of seemed like experiments, didn't really fit. Every part of this song fits and every part is dope. Oh my God, Stevie Wonder. Wow. And it's four and a half minutes long. And if you want a song to be long, it's this one. That, sh that should have been number one. You know? It's that good. It's really very good. Mm-hmm. Whew. Okay. Number three, Me and Mrs. Jones. I remember this one being dope. I remember this one being real good, too. Yeah. All right. I'm excited about this one now. Billy Paul was killing it, man. I didn't I didn't even know the guy's name. But Billy Paul, me and Mrs. Jones. Wow. I mean, I don't know if they were making albums back then. I think they were. They definitely were. I might listen to this album, you know? 360 degrees of Billy Paul. That's wild. That's a, I mean, that's a banger. Everything about it is a hit. Oh, goodness. Okay. And then, Claire by Gilbert O. Sullivan. And I'm going to try to, you know, I'm going to have a sip of coffee. I'm going to try to enjoy this song. Last time, really made a bad impression on me. This time, I'm going to try to Set, set better expectations so I'm not disappointed. So far though, first week in 1973 have been killing it. 50 years ago, they were kind of killing it so far. Okay, it's it's so heavy-handed, you know? And there's probably something there that I could learn, you know? And my cynicism is, is distracting me from something valuable here. But man, like, at the end of the first verse, they bring in, like, a quarter of a bar of a classic classical guitar, nylon string guitar, and then it just disappears. Like that part of the recording didn't make it to the final cut or something. And then it, it's all so, so heavy. And like there's a part in there where he's tra talking about playing pretend marrying his niece you know his Claire must be his niece so like it's cute like I get it it's cute is it number two? Oh man I I don't know how this one got I don't know how this broke into the top hundred all right and it shouldn't be number two if if Stevie effin wonder superstitious is sitting strong at number four how is Claire at number two you know that's just that's just the way of the world Well, Carly Simon sitting in the in first place. I mean, it's it's a good song. She's so big in that mix. She's belting it out to the back row, 
and the vocal performance isn't perfect, but that makes it better somehow. Like, they they never let a vocal performance like that get through, and that's kind of a mistake. You gotta let a singer sing, and you can't clean it all up, or it doesn't sound right. Mm. Well, week one of 1973 is pretty strong. 50 years ago, that's a pretty strong list of pop music right there. There's a lot of pop sensibility going on in there. And even, even Funny Face and Claire have a lot of pop sensibility. All right, all right. I'll be back next week. Have a good week.